Hello, everyone, and welcome down to episode 131 of the Down South Photo Show, Australia's most popular photography podcast. What are we, the highest ranked photography podcast? Gee, I'm not doing the intro very well this week. I'll tell you what, we could just make up whatever title we want, and no one's going to go check it. <laughs> no, that's we true. Are, we are We're... the number one, one, number one podcast in the world for photography-related <laughs> But yes, <laughs> with me, Brendan Waits here in Ocean Grove, Victoria, Australia, and the guy on your other screen, welcome back, or in your other ear, it's Cam Blake from Hobart, Tasmania, Australia. Welcome back, Cameron. Thank you. Thank you. Every time I come back after you have a special guest, I feel a little bit less significant. Well, uh, every time you come back after you have a special guest, I botch the intro. It must be this mercury cider that I'm drinking. It's got Tasmanian water in it, mate. It's also, I just realized, 6.9% alcohol. Yeah, they're, they're, they're lethal. That's there's, uh, a fair, rocket, there's a fair... Rocket fuel. There's a fair chance you may grow another head before the end of this episode. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Might happen. You never Might know. Might happen. Um, um, how good was Rudy? That was awesome. Ah, yes, Rudy. Uh, yeah. The response has been wonderful. Thank you. Mm. Um, Rudy has also said thank you for the response, the questions, the comments, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, he was great. I mean, a 17-year-old kid who already is pretty much an expert it's in already field. better. It was already better than us too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wouldn't be hard. Yeah. But he, uh, yeah, it's just amazing. Like, and you know, I watched part of the episode back when he was talking about the distances that we're dealing with here, and yeah. how old the light is. You know, yeah. the, the light is actually reaching his telescope after traveling through space for a million years. I mean, yeah. at light speed. <laughs> when, when, <laughs> when you think phenomenal. about it, like, like the whole universe could be done. We could be all shot. We would. We might not know about it. It might have already happened, and we're waiting right. for that exp that light to. You know, reach right. us to say it's over. Well, that's right. If the if the sun was extinguished extinguished all of a sudden, we wouldn't know for eight minutes. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. But um, yeah, amazing well, can, stuff. You could do a lot of do a lot of things in eight minutes. You could, yeah, absolutely. You could drink four hard ciders. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, would, what would you? Uh, yeah. What would you? What would you do if you had ten minutes left? <laughs> what oh, would God, you do? That's a question without notice. Yeah, yeah. Why not? What would you do? Um, what would I do? Yeah. Oh God. Can I answer that next week? I don't know. I need more. I need. Can I have ten minutes to think about? No. It? I want to. I want to spot. I want a spontaneous. Uh, come on. What would you do? Um. I don't know. Probably something really soppy, like hug my family. Right. Yeah. I reckon. I reckon. I'd take the family out in the front porch here, gra <laughs> grab right. a few, grab a few drink, drinks, and just watch it end. I don't know whichever yeah. way it's going to end, but. No, that's right. It's not, it's not like, like I'm not going to get into the, you know, get into the hallway or get into the bath tank. Keep it. Think it's keep it. Keep it light, Cam. Keep it light. I'll keep it light. Sorry. Okay. All right. Well, we're talking about astro, we're talking about astro and end of the end of the world and stuff. Oh yeah. This, this, uh, yeah. This, this yeah, could so, be one of the worst starts to show we've done in many times. I have no doubt. So if you haven't listened or watched episode one thirty, um, go back and this last week's episode with Rudy all the way from France, who um, talked about deep space deep space astrophotography. Mm. So and and he's messaged me during the week and he said he's by all means happy to answer anyone's questions about gear. I've had a couple of questions about people who want to get into the genre yeah. and yeah. what what telescope they might need to get started or indeed the telescope that Rudy uses. So more than happy to answer those questions. So by all means, hit us up in the comments below or yeah. head over to rudy.astro on Instagram and uh, tell him you're a fan of the show and he will answer your questions. So we should start ranking in France now. I have no doubt. Um, in fact, I, I know that we picked up some subscribers from, do we from uh, from France? So how many, how many yeah, subscribers do we have now? Eight hundred and sixty when I last checked. So that's on YouTube alone, of course. On the podcast side of things, I think we have eight hundred and forty-eight trillion. Yeah, so, I think it's it's in the definitely in the trillions now. Definitely in the trillions. It have to yeah. be. Yeah, yep, for sure. Because like, we are the number one podcast a photography podcast in the world so well in the world now okay fine um the um, winter comp which is feels like it's dragged on forever because it kind of has like winter itself um yeah. we have a people's choice winner cameron uh for yes, the winter do. comp would you like to announce the winner of that <laughs> apparently i'm announcing the winner <laughs> you are uh congratulations to leanne Mars marshall not uh not leanne Leanne Marshall. Well Leanne done, Marshall, Leanne. yes. I just want Definitely. to make sure I get that name right. Um, who had that great shot of out underneath the plane wing over, I think which it's is, over New Zealand, which would be okay. on the screen. Stop, stop with the thousand words. It's on the screen now. There. That, that way. way. That way. Um, yep. Awesome. Uh, I love that shot. Um, that was in Good my that, that was in my top top 10, top five. I think it made short. our short both our short lists. It did, one, so. yeah. Yeah, very cool. So um, am I sending something to her? I am. I think yes, I, you she's are. got a so she can get a hundred dollar voucher from me. 
Wow. Uh, or she could or she could have a Cradle Mountain book or she can have something. Generous. Very Just nice. uh, get in touch, Leanne. We'll work something out. Uh, send us an email, cam at tasphoto.com.au, uh, and we'll get that something out to you. And um, I mentioned it last week on the show that Eric, who won the comp, who yes. not the people's choice, the actual winner, uh, popped into the shop a couple of weeks ago, used his voucher, uh, bought a wonderful camp. Mate, we, we did a beautiful canvas print for him, not of the photo that won, but another one that he wanted to get done. Yeah. Uh, came up an absolute treat. Eric's traveling around with his lovely wife, so it was good of them to pop into the shop. And then brought it back for a refund so he can get the cash out of it. Yeah, imagine that. That, that, that'd not, be a rort, wouldn't it? We can't have can't, that. They can't do that. No, just, you can't exchange <laughs> it for cash. It's not happening. No, exactly not. Uh, 863 subscribers, apparently. Yeah, it's gone up quite, just as we're talking. As we were speaking. I love it. Uh, now, a uh, couple of plugs at the top of the show. Uh, number one is our Ballerine One Day Workshops Cam, which uh, yes. uh, I believe up on the website and are selling. They are, they are selling. Uh, we've got spots selling in both ones, January 17 and January 18. Which is a so, Friday and Saturday, I believe. It's a Friday and Saturday, yeah. A beautiful summer. Come down to that peninsula, the Ballerine Peninsula, and spend some time with us. Now, that uh, is, they the, are one-day workshops, folks. So it's either yes. the 17th or the 18th, not both. So, well, you can you, do you, both you, if you want. I was going to say, you can, if, you, if you want to really spend time with us, Who uh, you probably want to get your head read at the same time. Um, That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, they're on, uh, yeah, 17, 18. There's places in both of them. It's $199 for the... Pretty much from what what is it lunchtime to sunset yeah, type of thing. Sunset, and it's that's sunset. in summer, so you get a good seven to eight hours. Yeah, there, so yeah, and we go to multiple locations. We teach as much as we know. We'll answer questions. We'll give examples. Uh, you'll walk away with hopefully a, a bit more uh, knowledge under your under your hat and a bit more passion for what we do. Yes. Um, so those two are on sale uh, as we speak. They generally sell out pretty quickly. Yes. Um, I think people are waiting around just to see what their Januarys are looking for at the moment. Yes. Looking Jan- like, but... I can't believe we're talking 2025, but there you go. Mm. And... Well, I put some. I put something on my website today for 2026. Which is just incredible. So anyway, that's, that's what happens. Time that marches is... forward. Yeah. Um, and the other one we want to talk about is BFOP. So uh, the yeah. Bright Festival of Photography, which is happening from October 11, 2024. So in a couple of months' time. Uh, really looking yeah. forward to that. Um Cam over there is going into his fourth or fifth BFOP. It will be my first as a presenter. So uh, looking forward to that. He puts his, is that a BFOP hat? No, it's not a BFOP hat. My hair, like you said, before we got on here, Brenda was picking on how tall my hair was. And now I can't stop looking yeah. at you, bastard. Yeah. So now I'm going to put but a hat on. For those of you on the audio channel, Cam had Lego hair for a little while. I don't know there, what was going has, but I don't. Now, now he has a cap on. I have a cap. Anyway, BFOP, let's get back to it. Um, yes. BFOP's awesome. Uh, 11 to 13 October. Uh, it's getting bigger every year. There's going to be, like and it's almost sold out. I don't know if, why we're even plugging it because I think it, it has it sold out. Or I reckon there's maybe 25 spots left. Right, out of 500. If, so out of 500 being uh, sold. We are 64 days, 15 hours, 45 minutes, and 43 seconds away from it as we record now. That's right. Uh, it is awesome. So, yeah. Um, I've never met anyone that's gone to BFOP and said, "Yeah, you know what? That wasn't much fun. I I really didn't enjoy it." Um. It's a cool, it's a really good vibe. The whole town turns into this photo town. You can just just don't worry too much about what workshops or sessions you're going to do. Just get your ass up there. Book in whatever you can because everything molds into one. So if you don't get to do, for example, something with Brendan, you can always grab him later on in his downtime and he'll have a chat to you about whatever and blah, 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 vice versa with me. Uh, it is really good. Um, yeah, can't wait. So um, yesterday they put up a heap of the workshops. Yeah, you were um, there. It's a list in progress, so more workshops get added to that list as they get finalised and all the details get sorted out. Yep. Um, mine will be added uh, in the very near future. And, uh, yeah, the, it's so diverse as well. I think that's the cool thing. Like, you look through the list of workshops that are available, um, you can basically take photos of anything where you can actually be taught how to take photos of pretty much anything uh, yeah. when you come to the Bright Festival of Photography. Um, just, to, it, just, just to give you an idea, sorry to cut you off there, just to give you yeah. an idea of how BFOP works. So we had Matt Crummins on the show a few weeks ago. He's uh, 50% of the, the Brains Trust behind it. The other one is Nick Fletcher, who's um, a wonderful guy who is a great photographer in his own right. But just to give you an idea of how this works, the first workshop they put up there is called not Formula One, but close. So what they're going to do is they're going to get some light painting. So Dennis Smith, who's the light painting extraordinaire, did a job in one of the F1 car manufacturers uh, overseas this year. And there's a picture of this 
F1 car all lit up with this incredible light painting. But no, they're not going to do that. They're most likely just going to get some Honda Jazz or some car off the street <laughs> and do the same thing. Should so, I take my Renault traffic up there? <laughs> maybe take that up there. So it's one of those things where it's a you know it's a it's a professional festival, but there's a fair bit of piss taking in it as well, which I think I love it. I think that's one of the best things about it. No one takes anything too seriously, but. Um, yeah, if you get on beefopaustralia.com, you'll see that there's a heap of workshops up there already. Uh, you can get your tickets on there. Um, Glenn Lavender's going again, fan of the yeah. show. Maybe maybe this time you'll remember what the show's called. If you haven't done a Glenn Lavender workshop, now is BFOP is a massive... For those of you who already got tickets to BFOP and you didn't do Glenn's workshop last year, yep. I did, and I can tell you, the guy is very, very, very good at what he does. He's he's an excellent teacher. Um, the way he breaks it down and keeps mm. it incredibly simple. And at the end, here's a here's a down south photo show guarantee. You will walk away with an absolute banger of a photo from Glenn Lavender's session. You that that I'll agree with, but you'll also work away with a really now bad bit of respect for his joke telling. Yeah, and like, well, his jokes are terrible. Like his jokes are terrible. As as a joke teller, he's an excellent photographer. That's exactly right. Um, mm. Yeah, no, it's uh, Glenn's. You know, I remember I crashed that workshop last year, and you yes. know, that yeah, the people in the Indian restaurant looking out the window, going, "What the hell are you all doing there?" <laughs> That's uh, right. It's uh, it is good fun. Um, uh, you're doing a couple of workshops. I'm doing a couple yep. of workshops. Yep. Um, but uh, get on there and have a look. Um, they, like I said, there's only maybe twenty odd tickets left. Uh, just get, I, I don't know. It's, it's so easy for us to say, just, just go and do it. And people are like, oh, but I got to do this. I'm going to do that. Trust me when I say th this, one of the best things on the calendar each year that we look forward to as photographers and everyone else that goes looks forward to it. So it's that kind of festival that it finishes in the next hour. It's almost sold out for the next year. So yeah, that's right. Get on there and uh, take a look. Do yourselves a favor. Should we talk backgrounds, Cameron? I mean, we're well into yeah. the show and we haven't yeah, done that yet. You go first. Shall I? Yeah, why not? So this is a photo. Now I'm I'm going to try and remember the exact. I, I think it is 16 years old. Right. Any guesses as to where that might be, Cameron? Uh, I haven't I'm told you, so it's questions without notice. I'm going to say Eden. Oh, you are so close, Marimbula. Uh, further south. Mm, Starts with M. M. Marichador? No, that's a sweet slant. I don't know. M. I don't know. Malakuta. Malakuta. The magnificent Malakuta. Oh, I, I love it there. Great I'm spot. Pre, uh, that's pretty uh, wrapped. That is sunrise at Malakuta down on the right. – uh, if, if anyone's been to Malakuta, they know there's just water everywhere. It's just this massive big estuary. Yeah. And um, you can get – they've got their classic old jetties there and the old boats and stuff. But that photo, yeah, that – and the reason I love that photo is because it's taken with an Olympus E300. Right. Um, even though, yeah, look, I mean, it looks like an atomic bomb going off on the horizon, but <laughs> the color in the fo <laughs> the color in the foreground, everything that I just, I just love the color palette of the E three hundred. That little little bit of light on the bottom of the boat's nice. It it's catches you. Of, yes, it does. That's, that's right. Maybe cool. I should have just cropped down to that, but it was an E three hundred, so that's about as small yeah. as I could crop. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice. Hey, there's another location for workshops. Oh, mate, and yeah. would it would it would it be? Yeah, Malakuta mm. is magnificent. Um. Mm. You've been somewhere. Yes, I've been there. Can you not tell by my glow? I could no. tell by your tall hair. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with that tall hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've just got back. Well, I've been back a little bit now, a couple of days uh, from Fiji. We uh, had a bit of a getaway with the family. Went to Fiji for six nights, seven days. Um, it was wonderful. Glad I got back there. We've been to Fiji quite a few times. Um, but it's it's almost got that getting back to something like home. When you go yeah. there now, you, the people are just beautifully friendly. Um, kids had a ball. The kids just loved, like, literally every day. It was 9 a.m. till 5 a.m., uh, 5 p.m. in the pool. Yep. That was it. Get out, eat Good. something, go back in. Uh, they loved it. We did a bit of snorkeling. But it was just a really relaxing uh, trip. We stayed at the Hideaway Resort. Uh, shout out to anyone who might be listening from there. We, I gave a few plugs over there. Um, we uh, we won the trip. We had so many nights. new subscribers. We might have Fiji subscribers. Uh, we won the trivia in the resort a couple of nights in a row. That was good. Nice. Uh, but that was good fun. So uh, this shot I've got as my background was taken one of the first nights I was there. I just got my camera out and I went, oh, this is only a stone's throw away from where we had dinner. But uh, just classic Fiji. Just a beautiful Lovely. sunset. 
uh, that little bureau on the uh, on the right hand side is actually a wedding chapel that you can have a wedding in, and uh, our room was just down the back a bit further on the right. Uh, it was beautiful, really nice, warm weather. We had I don't know maybe 28, 29, 30 degrees every day, light breeze. We had a little bit of rain one night, which was cool. There was frogs out. Uh, everything was happening. I had one uh, really cool bit where there was some people in a, a hut near us. It must have been about like 10, 30, 11 o'clock when we were sort of settling down. And they were drinking and carrying on. We're like, oh, here we go. Yeah, we're going to get stuck with these jobos. And um, so I thought, I'll just walk outside and see where it's coming from. So, yeah, as you do as a dad, yeah, let's just see what's going on. And I walk outside and it's a bit breezy. And I walk out and I look up and the Milky Way is smack bang the core right above my head running between all these palm trees. Oh, fantastic. And I'm like, Oh, for Christ's sake, I'm not going to bed now. So I went and, got, went and got the tripod, got the camera out, went down a bit further out to the coastline here and shot back up and had the core running purely straight down the middle of all the um the palm trees. Um, it was just pure luck. But um, yeah, we had a great time. It was good. Didn't uh, we'll... bother to use that as your background? Just thought you'd run with that run of the mill postcard shot? Well, or maybe I'll maybe I'll update it as the episode goes along. Um, <laughs> if, if your computer plays along. If my computer wants to play along. But uh, yeah, it was good. It was a good trip. And uh Glad we did it. Like we haven't had a, a good holiday for a while, our family, and um, good. Yeah, so we might make it a bit of a yearly thing. Uh, look, it's I think always, I always good to uh, I have a getaway yeah. with the fam. And look, there it is. There you now you're talking. You, you can, you go. Cam's gone double background, everyone. Double background. So that was it. That was the Milky Way core. It was pretty windy. You can see all the palm trees moving. Yeah. Um, it's actually I learned something over there that palm trees drop coconuts when you're out in the middle of the night and it's windy. And and I didn't get me, but I heard a few land. I'm like, whoa, what yeah, the hell was I'm that? Actually, I'm like, I've, I've heard that they can be lethal. Yeah, they can kill people. It's <laughs> truth. So, uh, so needless to say, I uh, went back into the safety of my little hut. Well, while we're on this little thing, you took your Leica gear. Is that right? I did. Yes, I did. Okay, so um, fans of the show will know that Cam has become... Wanker. Mr. Liker. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I wanted to, I just want to ask you how it's going for you so far. I mean, it's only a couple of weeks in. There, there, yeah. there is the weapon of choice. There is the weapon of choice. Um, like, what is it? A Leica what? This is a Leica M11. M11, yes. So this nice. is a uh, rangefinder style mirrorless camera. Uh, so you look, the viewfinder is actually through here and you've got to me measure up the two little screens to get the focus right. Yep. It actually, it has a screen as well, obviously. Uh, and all the buttons and stuff like that. Very minimalistic. You can see there's not much on it. Nope. Um, and it's the second one I've had. Um, and you know what? I'm really happy. Good. Uh, I will not. The Fuji that I've traded in and got rid of, the Fuji GFX, is a, an amazing camera. Um, but just it just doesn't suit my style of getting around and carrying heavy gear and stuff like that. So this one is small. This is a little 50 mil lens. I got a little 21 mil lens for it as well. Um, it's just a really nice camera, but um, I've used it in Fiji and I actually used it the other day. I was out on the West Coast here doing a job for the West Coast Wilderness Railway uh, team and oh, yes. that was pretty cool. And I took that out. It's a slow camera. doesn't have any autofocus. It's all manual focus and everything like that. Um, but I like it. The quality out of it's really good. The one thing that I learned the other day about these cameras, what I think puts them above maybe some other brands is these, the lenses. Yes, of course. The the depth of field, the shallow depth of field in these lenses is magic. Yeah. Uh, and I did a few shots the other day at F2 of this locomotive sort of at the end of this railway line in the forest. And the the, the track just falls off perfectly into the foreground. The, the, the engine's sharp as attack and everything else just is nice and soft around it. So, uh, so yeah, I'm happy. Um, yeah, I'm going to stick with it for a long time, I think. Now you haven't given up. Um, like that's not wholly and solely your only camera. You've you've, you've no. hung on to your OM system gear. Yes. Uh, because there are going to be times when you're going to need um, yes. the speed of the OM system and also yeah, the, the, the reach of the OM system. So yeah, you'd be crazy not to hang on to something yeah. else. So, so I've got my OM one. I've got uh, a wide angle of standard in the tele and the little macro lens. That's all I've got for that now. So I've really minimized. I, I traded in and sold a whole heap of other lenses and got rid of a whole heap of stuff. Um, so I'm down to literally two camera bodies and six lenses across the whole thing, pretty much. Very good. Uh, oh, that's, and I that's good. Yeah, yeah, I took the Olympus with me uh, over to, to the West Coast, not to Fiji. 
to do um, that train thing. And you're right, there was somewhere that autofocus comes in really handy and yeah. the image stabilizing comes in really handy as well. Uh, the Leica doesn't have any of that kind of stuff, but uh, but I could easily carry two cameras for a, a weight that was less than the one Fuji I had. So, uh, so for me, it's, it's high quality. It's a 60 megapixel camera, so I can use it if I need it for my commercial stuff. It's light. It's good to use. It's fun to use. You really got to think about it and, and slow down. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy. Very good. I had a um interesting conversation. Uh, I ran my landscape and seascape workshop on Sunday. Um, basically, it's a four or five hour workshop where we have about an hour of tuition in the shop, and then we head out onto location here on the beautiful Ballerine Peninsula. And um, well, when we're down on the beach having a chat, it w- one of my customers asked me whether or not she should upgrade to a new Sony that she was looking at. She's currently shooting with uh, the OM-1, yep. um, but was really interested in a Sony A7R5, which I thought I'd mention on the show because we do talk gear a lot. We've, mm. moved, we've moved into gear talk. We're jumping all over the place here, but that's fine. We're all over the shop. Yep. Yeah, that's right. And, um, you know, I just posed the question, <clears throat> well, why? why? Why do you want to go to a, you know, to this particular model? And they, the first thing they said, well, it was, well, it's, I think, fifty megapixels. Yeah, maybe sixty. It's, uh, it's. I, th- a I think it is. I think it is sixty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the A seven R five. I said, okay. So how big are you enlarging your photos? And she said, oh, I don't really do much printing. <laughs> it's like, okay. So I think you might have just answered your own question. So yeah, that, that's the that's the end of the conversation, really, isn't it? It really was, and mm. and it was good because I don't think they'd sort of considered that part of it. Yeah. They did make the point though that they're interested in doing a lot of um portrait work. Yeah. And one area that I know Sony excel at is their eye detection. Yeah. Um for portrait. Um and it's incredible. You can tell it what kind of eye you're looking at, whether it's mm-hmm. a a dog's eye or a fish's eye or a human's yeah. eye or um and I, as far as I'm aware, Cam, and you can maybe, you'll know more than I do on this because I don't have a late model OM camera other than my OM5, which I know doesn't have it. They don't have yeah. eye detection, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Oh, they do. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, and it, it's, I think across the board, um, what I've seen, the, the Sonys and Canons probably excel Yeah. with the eye detection, especially when they're doing, like you said, animal and wildlife detection. Yes. Um, although having said that, I had a real issue with one of the Canons, or the customers, Canon on the workshop. Uh, but the Sony's I've seen work almost flawlessly with that. Um, it's quite quite amazing yeah. technology, isn't it? Well, it's all AI stuff. It's all mixing in together. It is very cool, mm. um, and they do work extremely well. So yeah, for portraits and stuff like that, um, yeah, you can use eye detection across the ranges now, pretty much. Yeah. And speaking yeah. of eye detection, I'm sorry for jumping all over the shop and the show tonight, but um, I had a customer bring in. I, th- I think it's called an EOS one film camera. Do you remember mm. those? Or maybe the it was big, a one N or something. The, the big ones, big chunky. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. EOS one. Yeah. yeah. And now it had eye detection, but of a different kind. Do you remember that? Uh, I remember I had an EOS uh, 50. Okay. And it had eye detection, but it read, read your eye. Correct. And, and, and you look out there, it would put the square, wherever you look through the viewfinders. So the you squ- calibrate your eye. Mm your iris therefore your pupil and your camera knows where you're looking and focuses on that point where you're looking this is 2000 technology yeah you know what though i i think some of that is still available in cameras right i think i think it works both ways there is eye detection on your subject but then is also eye tracking for when you and i think i think it's i think it's a patented canon thing well maybe Um, uh, i i I heard a rumor that it's going to be available in the r1 yeah which but no one's going to buy the R1 because it's ten grand. Well, someone says, will buy it. They wouldn't me, make it if like no it. one's going to. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you wank it. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Someone, someone's going to buy it. They wouldn't be yeah. making it otherwise. But I, I noticed mm. that uh, a lot of people are really raving about the R5 Mark II, yeah. which was the good, the well kept secret from Canon, yes. is now is now stealing the limelight from the R1, and the R1 is copying an absolute pasting in the media, pasting. which is. Which sort of doesn't surprise me, but it but it's interesting that you know yeah. their so called flagship camera is, is not is getting not underrated. Up hype. No. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of R fives, shout out to our friend Jamie. He Hello, finally Jamie. got his camera out and used he, it. 
he didn't even own one. He's just put a five over his old. One. He's just like scraped it in, penciled <laughs> it in. Right. Uh, no, no, he he came and did uh, what we call steam under the stars. We did some steam engine shots oh, yes. on the west coast. Uh, he came along to that and he pulled it out and like <laughs> it was quite fun. If you, I don't know, everyone's got a friend who's got an old Canon or even maybe an old Nikon without the flippy screen. Yep. The look on his face when he pulled the screen, he was like, "Oh shit." <laughs> <laughs> and I go, and you can turn it around and put it back, and then you got the screen right there. Yeah, it's like, oh, hi, right, okay. <laughs> it was like, it was like, what? This is what? Why have you not been using yeah. this already? Look at so, look at this 2009 technology I've got. I know, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> he was quite happy, and uh, I haven't seen the shots that he got. He, he was pretty happy with a few of them. He said so. Yep. Good. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, Canon. Uh, yeah, the R1. Yeah, I don't know, like. I don't think it's going to go down with any legendary status, but well, do you think there'll be one at BFOP? Well, Canon are coming, and Sony. That's Sony what I'm are saying. I, I'm I'm hopeful that Canon are there, so we can have a little hands-on. Although oh. we'll have to wear masks and hoods and glasses and stuff, so they don't well, recognize we, us. We're, we're going to do another live show from BFOP, aren't we? Surely. I would have thought so. Well, we've got to get our hands on an R1, just so I can pay out on it, like in the flesh. To say, we'll ask I Canon. I think the good people at Canon are going to, they'll be watching us eagle eyed no, while we do no, that. No one watches us, mate. If I, I, I'm going to get my hands on an hour one and then I'm going to pay out on, on the show. Yeah. And then that's it, the show will get, then we will get sued. So I tell you what I'm seeing a lot at the Olympic Games, Cameron, is these white lenses. So there's a oh. lot of Canon, a lot of Canon lenses there. I thought you were going to say something else then. I thought you were going to say you're seeing a lot of penises at the Olympics. Well, penises taking down uh, pole vault poles and stuff. Did you see that? I did see that. that was, you know that, that guy. Was, that guy has that now been off, That guy has now been offered a, 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 a very uh, yes, yeah, salubrious uh, Sal- role, <laughs> salubrious in a, role in, in adult, some films in that maybe only film adults. Yes, correct. Yes. Uh, and then there's all been the controversies about the boxes and the X and Y chromosomes and. It's, wow. it's it's the it's the uh, it's the era in which we live, which leads me to uh, a little topic a segue. that we want to talk about tonight. Do you like that segue? It was good, wasn't it? Yeah, mate. That's why we're number um, one. I want to talk about technology um, in terms of the photo finish. Now, this isn't new technology. This has been around for quite some time. However, it's been refined now so that they can actually get a result in a photo finish in under twenty seconds, which is pretty amazing when you that's, when you. That's horse racing, though, isn't it? Well, if you had a look at, um, if anyone watched the 100 metres in the Olympics, um, which is, some would argue, the pinnacle of sport in the world is the 100 metres yeah. final at the Olympics. That's um, what they all look for, isn't it? That's what everyone waits for, isn't it? Yeah, it's the it's the blue riband event that everyone mm. wants. So, um, yeah, anyway, I'm going to share the screen. So, we'll let's look see if, uh, Don't play around with screens while we're recording live. There we go, that one there. No, that's, so, that's the pole vaulter. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So that that is the finish line yeah. uh, of the 100 metres. On the Sony PlayStation 5. <laughs> it kind of looks it, doesn't it? Yeah. And this was the photo that they put up on the screen. And, you know, of course, if you look at that photo, what, what exactly are we looking at there? And and that's not how the how they looked on the finish line. That's no. uh, So what you're looking at here is if you, approximately. If you say, don't say AI, please. We're not looking at any AI okay. right, whatsoever. So... Uh, tell me one thing, Cameron, that you might notice about that photo that's different from the scene that you would have seen of them running down the track. Uh, maybe the colour of the track? Correct. So the colour yeah. of the track happens to be white. Do you know yeah. why that is? Because it's shot in black and white? No. Mm. What you're actually looking at there is the finish line. The white of the finish line spread over approximately 150 frames. Uh, does okay. That, does that make uh, yeah, any sense to you at all? Yeah. So instead of it being a slither of a line, it's... That's right. So okay. what you're looking at here is the instant each runner cross the finish line as they cross the finish line. But what you're actually looking at here is about roughly half a second spread over the entire page to right. give them the actual result in real time of who crossed the finish line first. Now, you're looking at it and you're going, okay, it's all white because that is literally the white. That's how wide the camera ang- the camera lens is. It's as wide as the finish line stripe. That's right. it. Because that's all they need, right? <clears throat> right. And the um, camera actually shoots at 40,000 frames per second, right. but they don't need all 40,000 frames. And basically, the computer um, spits out this image to show as each runner crossed the finish line, the moment 
they cross the finish line, they put it all together like this so that you can see exactly who finished where and when. Right. So that's why you can see some distortion. You can see there's a bit yeah. of um, rolling shutter effect. You're going to get that. That's that's quite yeah. natural for that to happen in a shot like this. Yeah. But the thing that caught my eye, and I'll, I don't know whether it caught yours, is if you look at the top, you can see the Olympic rings and the word Amiga. Yeah. So how, how come that's not... Okay, so when you're watching the finish line at the Olympics or any world championship now, if you look just above where the runners finish, you will see what appears to be a pole that looks like it's spinning or it's flashing. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know yeah. It is now. yeah, it's okay. actually the Amiga sign and the Olympics ring sign flashing past there at the same frame rate as the camera so that they can put this sponsorship on the actual f finish line photo. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy, right? So if you if you yeah. uh, if you imagine basically what you're looking at here is 150 finish lines yeah. all put into one image, and that's exactly right. what you're seeing here. And that's how they determine then what act physically happens. They zoom the image up quite large, and yeah. a judge has a marker where they line put that those lines that you can see there, and yeah. those lines there line up with the torsos of the of the um. Oh the yes, wing, each each, wing. each runner. Because it's the torso that wins the race. Because otherwise, if you have a look, you can see someone's foot is across the line. That ain't yeah. they ain't the winner. It's so the guy, so torso. the winner is the guy in lane three from the bottom, which is yeah. lane seven. And then yeah. second is the guy in yellow. In yellow, correct. And so third, you can see that's third is the guy. That is what lower. one five thousandth of a second looks like. Right. So yeah, I just found that really interesting. I was I was watching, I'm hmm. like, and they showed that photo, and instantly I was like, how how. How do they make this image happen? So I YouTubed it and lo and behold, there's a whole YouTube. There's a few YouTubers have put up stories about it. Actually, it's quite, yeah. quite interesting. So there you go. That's bloody cool. It is very cool, isn't it? But um, yeah. I've, I've been uh, watching the photographers a lot uh, at the mm -hmm. Olympics. I don't watch a heap of the Olympics. It's on at a weird time. But when I get up and watch the highlights, constantly now find myself looking at photographers. Do you do that as well? Uh, I, can, I can honestly say I have not watched a single minute of the Olympics this year. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, so that's we'll move on <laughs> to the next subject. Uh, no, but I've been watching, um, been watching what the photographers are doing and how they're going about it, and still deep down harboring a desire to 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 be a sports photographer. <laughs> that's it's pretty cool. It's, it's yeah. very very cool. They do get to some um, some cool, like they get to see all the cool stuff, don't they? They do, but man, they work hard. Like I was watching. Um, uh, they showed a, I think it was the BBC put up a documentary about, and it was Rio 2016. So it's a little bit old now, Yeah. but they had um, a couple of photographers that were lined up for the hundred meter, for this very race, uh, for the hundred meter final. And they were there eight hours before the race, setting yeah. up the studio, setting up the, the, um, the uh, stadium. Yeah. With remote cameras, with cameras in the ceiling, with cameras on the finish line, uh, and then literally having to stake out their spot, you know, pick pick the lane that they thought the winner would come from, all that sort of stuff. It's it's fascinating. Yeah. So, um, well, yeah, here's, very, a, here's, very cool. here's an interesting stat for you. Go on. So the Canon R1, which no doubt every pro there is working with because they're going to yep. try and flog the shit out of it. That's what does, they do. Does 40 frames a second. Right. So the most they could have taken on that shot if they were taking it from start to finish is only 400 shots. That's right. That's how fast these blokes run. That's amazing. Um, Is it 400 shots? 40 yeah. frames a second. 400, yeah. 400 shots. Seconds. Yep. Yeah. 100 shots. So, so considering I take, I, I reckon I've taken more of that just the other day of a, of a steam locomotive taken <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, it's interesting. But yeah, it's um, but ha like something else we didn't touch on. I reckon we need to maybe do an episode after the Olympics finished of the best shots of the Olympics. But have you yeah. seen that one with the surfer guy? Crazy. That like that's incredible. Like where the surf Gabriel Medina, just, yeah, yeah, where he's yeah. just up above the clouds and the surfboard yeah. is right next to him. Yeah, uh, I actually but, um posted that to my socials during the week and just like that, that's cool. Yeah, it was uh, probably the shot of the games, I reckon. So, well, oh, well, I'll tell you what, what's happened this year. Like, what are we? We're August. Mm -hmm. I reckon we've seen well, that I can think off the top of my head two of the best shots I've seen that are, that yeah. are historically yeah. going to last the time. So that the yeah. surfer guy one, amazing, yeah. and the Donald Trump ones. Yep, yeah. like. You know, that's two photos. You know, that's, that's the major role that photography plays in our lifestyles. That, that's not bad. Two out of about 40 billion that were taken. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, but we, I think we sometimes, 
underestimate the value of photography is that, you know, if those guys don't click that shutter and they're not there, we don't see that. We don't even know what happens. Yeah, and it's, it was actually interesting just going back to the Olympics thing because um, the photographers and but more importantly, the editors and publishers actually have deals with the Olympic organizing committee yep. in that if they put out a photo um, that's taken at an Olympic games, it must have the Olympic rings in the photo somewhere. Right. So it was actually interesting because that, that documentary I saw on 2016 was they had to decide where the photographer's pits were going to be. And then on the wall mm. behind the action, where to put the logo, you know, you know, yeah. in that case, Rio 2016, in this case, you know, where are we now um, in, uh, in uh, France, 24, uh, 2024 has to mm. be there with the Olympic rings. Um, even to the point where, you know, the, the outfits all have to have the rings. Yeah. On it's, them. Yeah. yeah it's, and it, it's to, it's to keep the prestige, I guess, but it's, the Olympics is, is such a massive marketing machine as well. well so I, I don't know if you listen to Joe Rogan. I do, um, and I and I did hear his take on it. Yeah, yeah, he, he doesn't rate as high as our show on on the podcast channels. No, but no. If he gets a couple more listeners, he'll get he'll get close. Yeah, but he was saying, you know, it's got nothing to do with the athletes. It's all about the marketing and advertising dollar. Yeah. And, well, what what he was point. saying was the money's got nothing. Doesn't go back to the athletes. Mm. It goes to which which I I agree is is abhorrent. Really, yeah. I mean, they're they're the ones putting on the show, and these are the people that give up. In some cases, did you see the yeah. cyclist from Australia in the velodrome? This is his fourth Olympic, sixteen years he's been at this, and yeah. he finally got a bronze medal. A bronze medal that was yeah. all which he ever you, wanted was a medal. Which makes you want to hate that fourteen-year-old kid at one skateboarding gold medal. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> They've been in it for five seconds. Uh, for, for someone who hasn't watched much of the Olympics, you certainly know a lot about uh, the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, I've been I've been reading the news. Okay, that's all right. You know what? I've been reading the news. It sounds morbid. I've been reading the news, waiting for the Middle East to kick off because, um, and England, England's out of control. Everything's going to shit over there, and uh, we don't realize how lucky. But one, one more thing on the Olympics. I heard someone today yes. had had a great um idea about the gold medals. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, they get some money, they'll get some sponsorship, and maybe some. Yeah. You know, Gina Reinhart might give them ten grand each or something like that. Um, but one of the guys said, if you win a gold medal, give him a house, buy him a house. Yeah. Government buys them a house. How good would that be? You win a gold medal, you get a nice house. Well, Gina Reinhart gave each of the um, swim team 20 grand if you want a gold medal. Yeah. And some so, golden Blundstones or something. Or I saw it? that. Yeah. <laughs> How was that? Tassie Company. Did you know Blundstones right. in Tasmania? There you go. I did. I did. So is Mercury Cider. Yeah. How's that head going? All right. Because it's it's Tasmanian, Tasmanian themed. Sure. Right. Um, we want to expand a bit more on Gear Talk because um, yeah. you, you brought up the point when we're off air that there are no. Currently, no compact cameras no. available um, no. to buy. And no. it, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's almost like these manufacturers now have given up completely on compact cameras thanks to the mobile phone. Yeah. And also what it also does, it creates a whole heap of BS that people get told when they go into retail stores as to why there's no stock. Yeah. Um, so a good, good mate of mine, one of my best mates, if not the best mate, Mark, uh, no, best friend from high school, uh, he's going overseas to Canada on a big trip. And... You know, who do you call when you want to learn about your cameras? And you call Cam, you know, I'll, I'll give you some advice. And so I gave, gave him my number. And, and I gave him your number. And that's it. And the problem <laughs> solved. Um, and he said, I want something. I want a small compact camera with a bit of zoom. I'm like, well, there's a few good ones around. And we spat off the Sony RX107, uh, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And then there's a Canon PowerShot GX7, the other sort of two that we went with. And he goes, all right, they look pretty cool. I said, they're pretty expensive for compact cameras. You're looking 1500 to $2,000. Uh, you know, they've got 24, 200 zooms, 20 megapixel sensors and all whatever it might be. Uh, he goes, all right, cool. Thanks, mate. I'll go have a look around. And he came back to me a couple of days. Well, actually today he goes, can't get one anywhere. I'm like, oh, bullshit. There'd be one somewhere. Nowhere. Nope. Nowhere in Australia. Harvey Norman, JB Hi-Fi, Camera Houses, DigiDirects, George's, you name it. Any, anyone, you, you don't have one. Nope. All, all the Canon, they're all sold out everywhere. You're looking at a three to six month wait list to and get them. I would say that that three to six month wait list may become indefinite. Indefinite. Yeah. And then I said, all right, well, you're going to Canada and the States. Why don't you look at B and H photography in New York uh, or whatever? So we went and we spent we spent about an hour on the phone today working this out. You cannot get one in the world anywhere. Any of those two cameras. Mm -hmm. um, and what I've seen and what uh, someone told me about what's happening at some of these. If you go on eBay, you can get some. Mm -hmm. 
because on eBay there is um, people selling them. Yeah, and how much? And how much they are. So these people most likely work in camera shops. They get the stock, they keep, they buy it for themselves, then they make a few hundred bucks on top of it, uh, which I've heard does sometimes happen. But some of the excuses Mark got as to why there was none in stock. The best one I had relates back to the Olympics that, oh, no, no, there's none of those cannons because they're all being used for the Olympics. Oh, come on. And I said, Mark said, he goes, I'm not a photographer, even though I know that's dog shit. He goes, they're not going to use compact cameras to shoot the 100 meter sprint or whatever it is. So, uh, but- Cameron, I, while you were talking, I found you one. I found you a G7X Mark III, brand new, $2,144. On eBay? On Amazon. Amazon in stock? Mm-hmm. In stock. In, in stock. stock, ready to rock. Uh, I could have it by Thursday, well, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Well, we're yeah. putting this on Wednesday, but uh, yeah. yes. That's, that's so expensive. That, but $2,144. I think the retail is like 1400 or something for those. Uh, about that, maybe even 1100 Yeah, not yeah, much. Not much. <laughs> so yeah. the question has to be asked, what the hell is going on with compact cameras? It's interesting, isn't it? It's um, you and it's know, sorry, it's, clearly, it's not it's, it's not those as well. It goes down the ranges. There's nothing uh, totally nothing about. So it. I've got a I've got a customer dead keen to buy her daughter a Canon SX seven forty HS, which is a camera that's been around for four years. Um, hmm. big zoom compact, great little camera. Um, got manual control. Yeah, really good travel camera. I think what's happened is um, there has been a bit of a switch in the market to real cameras again. And the decision has already been made by these manufacturers not to make them anymore. Um, right. So there might be a bit of scrambling um, with, you know, getting stock back into production, which of course will have a lag time of six months. Yeah. So um, it, it is interesting. I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing definitely more and more inquiries on uh, high end compact cameras. Mm. And the, and the number one reason, People say, yep, my phone, yeah, it does an okay job. It's got no zoom, but the big one, I have to look at my bloody phone when I'm taking a photo. Yeah. Well, this and they is don't the... want to see it. They don't want to see their messages. They want to be off the grid. They don't want to be, yeah. they want a camera that doesn't tell them that, you know, their daughter's trying to call them. <laughs> yeah. Well, keep, it's funny you say that because in the end, after speaking with Mark all day, he's like, you know what? I went into my office shop and updated my phone to the 15 Pro Max. It's got 48 megapixel. It's got a little bit of zoom, does really good video. And he goes, I can just keep it on me the whole time. Yep. And it's cost him 99 bucks to update it. Which is a bummer because he will miss that zoom. He will miss that zoom. That's what I said. Yep. You might. That's yep. the only thing you're, you're sort of compromising is that zoom. Yep. Um, but yeah, it was really interesting. I'm like, like it's only because I, I don't really look at that stuff too much because it's not the market I'm in. But he just came to me. He goes, I can't find him anywhere. I'm like, oh, bullshit. Come on. There'd be one somewhere. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely Yep. Zeros. I know my local camera house in Geelong, um, no stock of compact cameras and nothing on the horizon. So it's yeah. interesting. Um, they do have really cheap and nasty Chinese made compact cameras, but you know, for kids and that sort of stuff. But then there's just it's like I want to spend a hundred dollars on a camera, I want to spend eight grand on a camera. There's nothing yeah. in between. Yeah. It's it was really, really, really weird. Um and like it's a real gap. Like like People don't want to, you know, it's almost like the can- camera manufacturers have gone, we can't compete with phones at the moment. Hmm. So why bother? People are going to, people have got their phones and the phones are out doing us in megapixels and video quality, then stuff it, you know, why do we yep. bother? Yep. No, it's, it's going to be interesting. And, and I honestly do think that the, the manufacturers now that start looking perhaps at better technology and compact cameras might be the ones that come out on top uh, yeah. in the next, in the next year or two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a really interesting conversation and, um, it just sort of opened my eyes up. I'm like, wow, this, there's, there's a massive gap and, you know, you know, I, so I waited that little Fuji I've got, I waited months for that to come in as well. The same problem. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's strange. Yeah. Very strange. Mm. Um, now Cam, are we going to have a look at this deer cam or are we going to ask for deer cams? Uh, I reckon maybe we hold off on the deer cam. We've been going about 50 odd minutes now. We have. If you have a mm. deer cam question, please send it in. Uh, now you can send us a deer cam through Facebook uh, at our Facebook page. You can. you can send us a deer cam via email, which is linked below to Cam or myself, or you can head over to dsps.com.au and check out that website while you're there. And while you're there at dsps.com.au, perhaps you could, like this person's done, buy us a beer. Can we have the beer donations for this week, please? Wow. Wow. Seamless. 
Wow. I started poorly, but I'm coming home strong. Like yeah, you started, you started, you, you, I actually thought you were going to say, you know what, scratch that, let's start again, but you didn't. You kept <laughs> no. going. Thank uh, you. Beer donations, it wouldn't be a beer donation without Mallory. Hello, uh, Mal, Mal. Mal H. Um, uh, I'll has, see Mal in two weeks. I'll see Mal in a couple of weeks. He's coming to do the macro workshop. Oh, I hope that doesn't overlap my... when I'm supposed to be up in Bright. But anyway. When, when are you in Bright? I don't know. <laughs> the so, 21st of August. Uh, yeah, he might. He's down here on the 23rd and 24th. Oh, well, I'll see him just before he leaves then. You might be able to cross paths on the Hume. Lovely. Um, but thank you, Mel, for your donation. Um, yeah, a small week this week is probably a good thing. We don't probably need too much more. I don't need any more mercury cider, that's for sure. If you would like to buy us a beer, head to dsps.com.au. Buying us a beer helps prop up the show, helps us to promote the show, um, and also literally buys us a beer. Literally. So, hey, literally. you know when you go on planes and stuff, and this is, going, this is going to be controversial, it may spew over to the next episode. Oh, is this a teaser? It could be. Um, I've got a, I've got a bit of a bone to pick, and it's it's with some pretty high profile people. Um, oh, so you know you're on you're on, you're on a plane. I download some videos to watch YouTube to watch and stuff like that. Yep. So I downloaded, and I know you're a big fan of Thomas Heaton. Yeah, I know I you am. like his work, and and a few others. And uh, Nick Cavia is it Nick Cavia? Uh, uh, Nick Carver. Nick Carver. Um, yep. And so I downloaded a whole heap of things, and I was watching one of Thomas Heaton's videos about his tornado chasing and storm chasing yeah and and the amount of times i found myself just sitting there going bullshit bullshit no that's bullshit you're an idiot right. the amount of times i did this through the episodes i'm like what what's going on is he slipping the amount of mistakes that he made that he that he openly said he'd made and some of the advice he was giving i'm just like doesn't make sense to me so yeah look i, I think I, um i think some youtubers um. Yeah, mate, you might be right. Thomas Heaton might be one of them. He doesn't listen to the show, so we can talk about him. Um, definitely not Nick. Nick. No, is, no. Um, but that was the comparison I was going to make. Yeah, yeah. I I watched his video of him in Yosemite. I love Nick Carver. I think yeah. he's. I think he's. His productions are awesome. He's such a dude. Like he's such yeah. a relaxed. He comes. Yeah. He, he comes across as a kind of guy you'd love to sit and have a beer with and talk photography. We've got to get him on the show at some point. It'll, You've, it'll you surely we've asked him, haven't we? We've got to get. I haven't yet. No, no. I'm, it's the old. It's the old. Wait, you know, well, build he's up. off. I'm building gonna, up to it. He's going to be. I offline. had a chat with him last week, and I'm, right. I'm having a little. You can't just. You know. You got to. It, it's subtle. You right. Work on him. Can't. Well, I watched his after <laughs> I watched the Thomas Heaton one, and I, 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 I've got nothing against Thomas Heaton. Obviously, he's a very successful YouTuber and photographer, yes. and all that. But I just found myself. As a professional, I think I'm quite knowledgeable about what I do and what how it all works. Yep. And I just set, set myself sitting there going, that's bullshit. Like, that, that's misleading someone watching this. Like, Look, that's I, not going to help I think, someone. I think Tom is pushed hard up against the line. I don't think he's crossed it yet, but he's pushing hard up against the clickbait line. Um, he's yes, pushing he is. hard up. Yeah, he is. And he's pushing hard mm. up against the um, advertising line and yes. you know, promotional stuff. The guy's making a good living, I think. It appears yeah. that he's making a good living at his photography, and YouTube is definitely one string in his bow that's that's, that's yeah. doing that for him. Um, but I, I do agree. I think when I started watching Tom Heaton, which has got to be, geez, eight years ago, mm. um, his work was a lot more subtle. Yeah. Uh, now it's a lot more clickbaity, a lot more action, a lot more. But he's a storyteller, and I think he's yeah. a good storyteller. But yeah, I think you're right. And that that whole storm chasing thing that he broke, he spread over four weeks, could have easily been one video. Yeah. Um and I, I encourage I encourage people go watch the the series. It's great. I, I think storm yeah. chasing is yeah. awesome. But and, I think I yeah. think in Tom's defense in this case, he's having some time off and he needed to produce a month of videos basically to put right. out so he could rack off for for, for a month. And and yeah. I, I I understand that. Um yeah, uh, hopefully the next stuff he puts out is is a little better um yeah. mind you some of the photos he got on that storm chasing thing were phenomenal like they, they, were, they were they were very but they could have camera. they could have been better they were very good camera anyway look at me being a wanker <laughs> um this is what this is what happens you buy one of these all of a sudden you're an expert yeah um <laughs> that's right yeah. no i just i just watched it i must admit i've watched a few of them over the last few months of his and i find myself I, and and compare it comparing to nick's yeah and um and the other guy, um, James Poppus, Popsis, 
props us. And They've not, got that- not to mention our friend of the channel, Ben Horn. Uh, ben Horn. Like Ben, Ben just goes without saying he's, he's a beautiful every time. Yes. Um, I watched Nick's one the other day and I was listening to it and I was chuckling along. I like this guy is cool. Yeah. He knows his stuff. He gets some great yeah. shots. He um, shoots film. I mean, he shoots on. film, but he's down to earth and he, he's not, it's not a plug every time he's doing something or yeah. it's not, it's not. Uh, but know, Nick has, Nick has developed a style and he's honed a style of video. Uh, his edits are, superb he yeah and yeah. and where where nick carver and we'll link him below but where where he stands out for me is actually his audio yes um the sound of the camera shutter the yes. ticking of his stopwatch ben yeah. horn's quite similar but um yeah nick tends to put you in the place yeah. um his series that he did on andalusia in uh in spain was absolutely yeah. magnificent so so let's just get him on there's a plug for you nick Nick, yeah, I think we if want... we mention his name enough, it'll come Nick, up in Nick, some Nick. algorithm. Nick Carver, Nick Carver, Nick Carver, Nick Carver. So we want you on the show, Nick. Uh, get yeah. your people to reach out to ours. Absolutely, Cam. What have you got coming up this week? Are you going shooting trains again? No, I am going to Cradle Mountain on the day Why this would comes. Would anyone out. go there? What a waste well, you know, of time. You know what? I'm starting to ask myself that question. I think it's gonna, <laughs> I think, I think, I think it's gonna rain most of the time we're there. Oh, um, oh I've I've got my winter workshop happening. Fantastic. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, we get some sort of fluffy stuff fall out of the sky. Do you want me to um, pop but, over and do a um, portrait workshop in a in a in a hut for you? I think we're going to need to do something like that. All right, All right. Um, okay. no problem. I'll five come star over. five star Dan arrives tomorrow morning, so he's uh, ready and rocking to go. So Good. I'm up I'm up there until Tuesday next week, and then uh, what have I got? Then the next weekend after that, I'm back over to do more steam trains. Very good. And then I've got the wonderful Cheryl Davis flying in from WA to do our macro workshops. It's all and, happening. And then, yeah, then we're into the Tarkine and then God knows. I don't know. Where and we're before going you know it, it's BFOP. And before you know it, it's Utah. Oh, That's going to roll you, around are, very quickly. <laughs> are, you, are you getting excited? Uh, I haven't allowed myself to, to be perfectly right. honest. Um, uh, just five, just five star to... Dan. Sorry, five star Dan asked me a good question today. Mm. He goes, we've got three cars. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, um, I don't think our two-way radios work in America. It's a different frequency. I'm like, what? So I looked it up, and he's right. The, two, the CB radio, handheld radios, the Australian ones, don't work in America. Really? Because they, they use a completely different frequency altogether. Right. And and you've got to have, like, a license to use a handheld UHF thing over there. I'm like, right. okay, just another spanner in the works of Utah. So this is good. This means um, I'll be off driving somewhere and you'll be yelling at me trying to get in contact yeah. with me. And We're going to have to learn this sort of stuff. And we've well, got phones. We'll be yeah, fine. that's right. We'll be fine. Smoke signals. Totally fine. So, it'll, uh, it'll what about you? What have you got coming up? Uh, that's a very good question. And I probably should have answered my own question um, asking what I've got coming up. Uh, it's uh, another week at the shop doing so much canvas printing. My goodness. I mean, I'm wrapped, of course. Yeah, I love, you look like it. <laughs> it, it. Wow. Just... <laughs> Yeah, a lot of a lot of um, big printings, not just yeah. canvases. Actually, I'm I'm printing a lot on um, cotton rag material at the moment. So, the heavyweight matte cotton rag uh, paper, which uh, I love the Ilford stuff I use. Um, it's got a beautiful finish for it for photography, and when you put it in behind glass, it just looks yeah. nuts. So, um, I did uh, eight A1 fully framed cotton rag prints today. So uh, and nice. framed them all. So that was that was a bit of a mission. Uh, but I did find time to head over to Point Lonsdale, and this is the no, this is the oh, callback. No. This is going right back to the start of the show. Come along to our ballerine workshop and hang out with us at the Point Lonsdale Lighthouse. It is such a photogenic lighthouse. Yeah, it is a very cool spot. I thought you were going to say you played golf. No, I, I took um, the dog who is asleep over there on the couch uh, yes. for a walk, and that's why he's asleep on the couch. I tuck it him right out. I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, it'd be business as usual this week. And then the week after, uh, I'm up to Bright. So nice. very good. <clears throat> nice. All right. Cool. Well, that's that's been a good catch up on episode 131. Yeah. Um, quick shout out to uh, the Diamond Valley Camera Club. Yes. Who invited me the day before I went to Fiji for a bit of a chat. Uh, I went up there in my old stomping ground. They let me back in. Um, funnily enough, I didn't really know anyone there from Diamond Valley. Um, but it was good. We had a good hour or two hours of chatting. A uh, nice little camera group full of great people. So thanks for having me along if they've listened. Um, again, I plugged the show. Not that we need to plug it because we are number one in the world, but I um, I did in plug it in Dime Valley. Yeah, that's right. Maybe the universe. Yeah, I know. Isn't it amazing how Mr. Universe always comes from the earth? 
this has been episode 131 of the Down South Photo Show. Uh, are you done and dusted, Mr. Blake? I am now. That's the shit else. No worries. <laughs> we will see you for episode 132 next week. Bye for now. Ciao. Miss Universe, you freaking idiot. Uh.